Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. Um, today, I'm going to talk about some a strategy that I think is going to play out extremely well as we go forward. I'm going to start by pulling up the gold chart here. And um, I believe that we are at a new gold bull market that started back here in November. Um, that really lacks conviction and a lot of people don't believe it's happening. Uh, this is reminiscent of the 2001 to 2011 bull market uh, for gold and other metals that I saw. And uh, it was very similar in the early days of that bull market. Nobody really believed that we were in a bull market. Uh, and uh, subsequently to that, there was a lot of money made in that bull market. And, um, you know, looking at the fundamentals, reasons to be bullish on gold, there are very many of those. Uh, the Federal Reserve, after the 2008 economic crisis, went on about a 14 year period where they were at or near zero interest rates. And if you factor in inflation, they were well below zero interest rates. And that long-term period of, of low interest rates or no interest rates, uh, they were practically giving away money. It created several bubbles and uh, uh, has put the economy in jeopardy. Uh, some of those, je those situations are that um, you know, they cause the inflation that they're currently fighting. Uh, and it's hard for me to imagine that they can, you know, be able to stop inflation when first they thought it was transitory. And to this day, they still haven't recognized that they were the ones who caused it. So if you, you know, if you don't recognize reality, how are you going to change what's happening? And I don't think that they can or will. Um, inflation is, uh, you know, a factor that I think is uh, caused by that 14 years of near zero interest rates. And you're not going to fix that problem in a year of aggressive rate increases. In fact, by raising rates so aggressively, you're going to cause huge problems. And they are causing those problems. They've, um, you know, caused a, a, a debt death spiral, if you will. Um, the debt has gone from now it is over 125 percent of GDP in the United States. That's, you know, not something that cannot continue forever. Uh, they've got this inflation problem, and they're fighting it by raising interest rates aggressively over the last year. And while doing that, they are breaking things. They've broken the housing market. They've broken the auto market sales. They've broken big ticket items. They've got consumers that need to use their credit cards to uh, to make ends meet, and they're paying 20% interest rates, uh, which is you know untenable for the long term. And then the one that I think is a really important situation is the banking crisis. Now, we saw in early March um, when this move happened that uh, uh, a lot of the small regional banks uh, came under pressure and we had a big run in the price of gold. And uh, many believed that they, they, the Federal Reserve and the FDIC and the Treasury have been able to stop that banking crisis. But in order to have a reality check on, on if they're able to do that, you have to look at what caused the banking crisis. And you go back to that long-term period of near zero interest rates. They loaded up on long-term bonds and uh, mortgage-backed securities. And now those assets are underwater and they are in they have problems with their um, with their liquidity when when consumer or when bank depositors want their money out they have to sell assets at a loss and this has caused some serious problems but they aren't they, these small regional banks like silicon valley bank and uh, and the others um 
they are, are not, ex you know, a small group. There's a very big group of um, banks and other institutions that have also positioned themselves quite aggressively in these underwater assets, including the Federal Reserve, who is the biggest holder of those underwater assets. And the next shoe to drop is going to be the um, commercial bank or commercial real estate. Uh, and that's part because of the uh, long period of low interest rates, but also after COVID, a lot of people realize that they don't really need to be going into these big office buildings. Uh, they can work from home. And that trend, I don't think, is ever going to change. Uh, you know, why be stuck in traffic for an hour or two hours each way every day? That's very non-productive. Uh, it creates tired drivers and tired workers. And um, uh, I don't think that trend is going to change. And so commercial real estate has some big problems. And another thing that is not as well talked about, but is a reality that's going to cause problems for the for the um, economy is the uh, the or for the U.S. dollar is the uh, the currency wars that are currently going on between the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and a whole long list of central banks that want to join that na that BRICS nations in creating an alternative to the US dollar as a as the this, the main uh currency of trade uh worldwide and um as these countries are creating this currency war they're also positioning themselves aggressively in the price of gold so this new currency that's being talked about, or possibly the the yuan in in China, um, is significant is going to be significantly backed by the, the by gold, and so these central bankers are are sending a message that I think investors should pay attention to. They want a um, alternative to the world reserve currency that is dom dominates world trade in the U.S. dollar and that they're backing their currency up with uh, um, gold. And, uh, you know, from a big per picture perspective, I think that that's a strategy for investors out there that want to protect their money uh, to put it into gold and silver and other things like copper um, and other commodities, not just metals, but also agricultural commodities, because these are the things that we need to make our world revolve if you will um we nothing happens without uh, in our daily lives without electricity uh, on the computer and the microphone that i'm talking into the food that i store in the fridge uh, the oven that i use to cook it um the uh, the car that i use to get around all of these things require commodities we either uh, these are the things we need and um positioning investors positioning themselves in those assets is a good way to protect their money. Now to grow their money is a, a key point of what I wanted to talk about today, which is in the mining stocks. Um, that They offer a tremendous opportunity um, because they, they are trading right now at very low valuations relative to the assets that they hold in the ground. The last time I saw this happen was in um, uh, in two thousand, the year two thousand, before the two thousand and one to two thousand and eleven bull market started, and back then they were trading at very similar valuations relative to what they have in the ground, and uh, then we went on a decade long bull market. Uh, but at the start of that bull market, nobody really believed that that was happening, and we're seeing the same thing happen with. Uh, with the junior mining stocks, here is the TSX Venture Exchange. Um, now, this big move here had more to do with weed stocks and crypto stocks and technology stocks and uh, that started to be a big uh, influence in the index. But there is still a, a big influence that is happening with the junior miners. And this was sort of the end of those alternatives and what I wanted to point out here is 
look at this low volume right there. We've got been on since uh, about the first, uh, started somewhere in the second quarter of 2022. Look at how low this volume is. What that tells me is that the investors that have wanted to sell, those that like to sell assets on the lows, um, have pretty much run their course. So now we're at an inflection point. Um, that inflection point will be influenced by the price of gold. Um, so, and I clearly believe we were in a bull market that started back here. Uh, back in November, we had gone through a triple bottom in September, October, November, then an explosive breakout uh, that lasted until early February. We went through a golden cross in January. We also had a big January effect that portends a uh, strong um, 2023. Uh, we had a correction in February, which is going to happen in bull markets. And what caused that was a uh, stronger than expected employment numbers that the currency traders, which gold uh, runs contrary to, started to believe that the Federal Reserve was going to crank up the uh, interest rates. And um, we had a double bottom. And then the banking crisis started. And it started here. The bottom was at about 1860, and it ran up to just about 2100. Now we're now trading slightly below the 50-day moving average, uh, although we are aggressively above the bottom of the 50-day moving average, which was around 1677 So we're about $300 above the 50-day moving average and significantly above the 200-day moving average, and the moving averages are in a bullish trend. So I think the next move, big move, will be a significant breakout. The last time we got oversold like this and traded below the 50-day moving average, uh, we then had an explosive move of about $300. And uh, I think we're in for something very similar here. Um, now that we've had this basing uh, slightly under the 50-day moving average, I think the next move is to the upside. Now, what could affect that is this uh, this next Federal Reserve meeting. They have a they're they're at a pretty uh, important juncture in the raising of interest rates. Uh, as I talked about earlier, they're breaking a lot of things, and I think it's becoming more clear that they need to stop raising interest rates. Uh, they've been very aggressive, and they haven't allowed those aggressive moves to work their way into the economy. Usually it takes, um, you know, a year to two years to see uh, the moves by the Federal Reserve to really have an impact on those um, on the uh, on the economy. So they're due for a uh, for a stop of the raising of interest rates, a pause, if you will. But I don't think it's going to be a pause. I think it's going to be a hard stop and that the next big move will be for them to start lowering interest rates. Now, everybody that um, you know follows economics knows that it's not long after the last rate increase before you have your next lowering of interest rates. But many are saying, well, it's not going to happen in 2023. Um, I, I think that the problems that the Federal Reserve has caused by the relentless raising of interest rates is going to require that they're going to cause a, a severe um, economic correction that they will need to um, start lowering sooner than a lot than they think and a lot of the big time economists think. So, uh, you know, this is a backdrop for a big move in the gold price and an even bigger move in the junior and the developers phases of the uh, mining sector. And um, I, uh, I think that, again, that we're in an inflection point. Those that have wanted to sell, the volumes are telling us that they have, uh, those that want to sell on the lows have sold all they can sell. And, uh, you know, that, so we're starting from a low base. And I think that that's going to cause a very significant rally uh, that's a lot closer than people think. So now I'm going to quickly talk about some companies that I follow very closely that I think have uh, some immediate uh, catalysts to move their stocks higher. 
one of those companies, and I'm just going through these alphabetically. I'm not putting them in any priority. Um, these, uh, the first one is Arizona Silver. They're a sponsor of my show reports, and uh, they are waiting on drill results from their project in Arizona. What makes me particularly excited about the drilling is that most of their drilling has been above what you call the boiling zone in an epithermal vein system. And recently they drilled their, uh, their deepest hole and uh, they had some exciting news out of that, that, you know, people will wait for the assay results. And, uh, but I try to get ahead of those assay results. And uh, one of them is that they drilled very much deeper than they have before with a core rig, uh, which will give them a good picture of the geology at depth. But interesting enough is that in these epithermal vein systems, a lot of times you'll find blind veins, which they did in their recent drilling. Uh, and I think that uh, that's a very important step. Uh, I predicted that they would, and I think that they will continue to find more. That's the nature of these epithermal vein systems. And uh, I, I, I'm eagerly awaiting their next results. What really makes me impressed about this project is that they're already getting high grades to bonanza grades above the boiling zone. And if you look at the core, it, you get pieces of, of quartz <clears throat> that has the gold. And even though it's getting diluted quite significantly with the country rock, um, the, uh, the grades are quite exceptional. Uh, you're really not supposed to find that uh, that above the boiling zone like that, but they are. And uh, I think they have a very important epithermal vein system uh, that will generate a lot of news. And uh, they are awaiting assay results on one hole now, and they should be completing another deeper hole uh, very soon as well and be awaiting those assay results. So I think this company has plenty of catalysts ahead of it. Athena Gold is a very small junior mining company that I believe has made an important discovery of oxide gold in the western part of Nevada called the Walker Lane Trend. La uh, the, the most recent drilling hit three holes of oxide gold that were quite exceptional for an oxide gold system. Uh, they're bonanza grades for an oxide gold system. You know, a lot of those oxide gold systems are mining at a half a gram. These guys were hitting multiple grams and even over 10 grams. So you've got orders of magnitude higher oxide grades than, than what makes up a lot of mines these days. And the reason that I believe that they're onto a big system is that they've got the, uh, the key faulting on the north and the south. And then in between, they have this big um, alteration zone. Uh, and what happens is the when the fluids that carry the gold interact with the country rock, it uh, alters the country rock. And so you see this big area of alteration. They've kind of just started touching the surface on that big alteration package and hit this high grade gold. They're gearing up to do some do more drilling on that and quite extensive drilling on that. So I think Athena Gold can also deliver a lot of great news. Uh, BlackRock Silver, I'm really bullish on their uh, Silver Cloud project. Why I'm so bullish on it, they uh, they kind of threw a Hail Mary pass at that project to either kill it or make it live. And uh, uh, they got uh, very good results that are making it live. Uh, they hit a uh, intersection of 70 grams per ton of gold and 600 grams per ton of silver in an oxide uh, or in a epithermal vein. Uh, and um, these epithermal veins, they come in clusters. Uh, many of them don't make their way all the way to surface, so they're called blind veins. Um, not only do I think that they're going to expand on the bonanza hit that they had, but I think they've got a very high probability to find additional veins uh, that are blind and don't come to surface and they're in a great camp to the north of them they've got the Midas mine which was sort of a company maker for Franco Nevada and uh, the Hollister mine is uh, in close proximity as well and those were very high grade epithermal veins and now 
in that immediate area, Arizona, um, Black Rock Silver has found one of those and they're drilling right now. So stay tuned for news from Black Rock Silver. Uh, Dynasty Gold is a, uh, a company that I'm very excited about because they found an orogenic gold system in uh, in Ontario near the town of Dryden, which is not very far from the town of Red, Light, Red Lake, where there's been some famous mining of orogenic gold systems. Now, to have an orogenic gold system, you need to be in a greenstone belt, which they are. You need to have structures, which they do. And then, of course, you need that high-grade mineralization, and which they do as well. Uh, the highlight hole from their drilling back that they announced in January was a 1.5 meter intersection of 246 grams of gold. Um, that's certainly bonanza grades, and it was part of a, one, a three meter intersection of 151 grams of gold. Now they've hit on three of their own holes, and one historical hole is starting to show continuity of that high grade to bonanza grade in the in what I call an upper zone. But then they drilled one hole drilled deeper, and it also hit a 1.5 meter intersection of bonanza grades of gold. And what I think is happening is you've got a stack uh, zones of gold mineralization in an orogenic gold system. That's that's reminiscent of the uh, Red Lake Gold Camp. And um, uh, the guy who made Gold Corp uh, was Rob McEwen. And Rob McEwen recently did a uh, $1.2 million financing for uh, Dynasty Gold. And um, so it's getting his stamp of approval. And um, uh, everything that uh, I see suggests that they're on to something very serious there. And uh, I, uh, they're about to start drilling. And I'm quite optimistic about the um, about the uh, drilling that they're going to do to extend that uh, that those zones that they've already hit with bonanza grades of gold. Uh, I wanted to quickly mention Generation Mining. Uh, they are a new, brand new sponsor of my my reports. I talked about them. Uh, I just put out a, a report, uh, an interview with their. CEO Jamie Levy and we had a great conversation about the company because what I think makes them quite special is that they're in the there's two big waves in the Lasan curve. One of them is on exploration success and one of them is when you bring a project into production. They're in the sweet spot of that second uh, wave in the Lasan curve. Uh, and uh, they're in that wave when they have they're trading at less than ten percent of their net present value. Uh, so they're in that that sweet spot with a very low valuation or low base, if you will. And uh, I just think it's a matter of time before this company has explosive moves, mainly because you know Pierre Lasson, this is the exact kind of company he looks for. Uh, companies in that sweet spot of the uh, second wave of the Lasan curve. And there's also investors out there that try to emulate uh, his stra stra investment strategy. And But the big point is also that the industry doesn't have enough of those kind of opportunities for investors and, and uh, uh, the industry needs more. Uh, and so investors that want to emulate Pierre Lasson's uh, strategy uh, have a small menu to choose from. Uh, and uh, I, I recommend you go to their, the, uh, my Rocks and Stocks News on YouTube or my Substack at Rocks and Stocks News, uh, .substack Rocks and Stocks .substack com, And you'll find that interview that I just put out this past weekend, and um, I think you'll be very impressed with the company. Um, Goliath Resources put out news today. They have an exceptional project in, in the Golden Triangle of British Columbia. This is an area where there's been a lot of big and uh, very profitable mines found and built, and, and uh, I think that Goliath has one of the most important new discoveries that I've seen in several years in um, 
in the Golden Triangle, and they're drilling right now. The key project that they have is their sherbet uh, or their um, gold digger project and the sherbet uh, zone or area. And uh, there they found this big uh, um, zone and, and stacked zones above it uh, where they've hit 97% success rate with their drilling to hit gold. Their average thickness is about six gram or six meter over six meters and over six grams per ton of gold. So they're outlining a very significant amount of gold that I think could be well over two million with the potential to go over five million. Now, what has me excited is you look at these stacked lenses and they're all coming down the mountain. And the mineralization is controlled by two faults. Uh, that uh, go up the mountain and one that's sort of on the side of the mountain and then a shear zone. And all of these things are pointing towards a deeper source or a source that's down the mountain. And uh, <clears throat> and they're drilling for that right now. They're drilling to uh, understand more about the known mineralization plus to expand on it. And I think this is going to lead them to a great deal of success and uh, I, I already believe that they're in that two to five million ounce uh, target window, and uh, they could well exceed that if these these zones continue as I think that they will, and the 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 faults, which are the cracks in the earth that allow those gold bearing fluids to make their way up to surface, I think if they keep on following those faults and those zones, that they're going to find the source. And uh, if you've got in the the zones that come off of that source are so significant, <clears throat> it's a very good uh, indicator of what will happen when they get into those zones. Uh, so Goliath Resort is, is another one I'm very bullish on. IED Gold is one of the ones that I consider my top picks. And why I say that is IED Gold is on a path to become the second largest producer of gold in Nevada, which is, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty significant thing because the, the ones that are bigger than them are uh, the joint venture of Newmont and, Go and um, Barrick. Uh, so if you can be second in class to those companies, um, that's going to make you a very high premium company. And, uh, you know, that kind of a company will host, a, you know, quite significantly over a $5 billion valuation. And they have three key pillars to that to grow into that size. One is their Cove project, which is over a million ounces of high grade. Uh, that they're moving ahead. They recently had some news that uh, you and Downey and I spoke about on an interview. Uh, they also have the Granite Creek project, which I think is a, a multi-million ounce mine. Um, they're right, you know, they're right beside a, a 25 million ounce mine at Turquoise Ridge, and uh, the same rock packages and the same structure and the same mineralization extends all the way onto the. The, their, their own uh, project and they have excellent continuity of the high grade both uh, along strike and at depth and that without a doubt is a world-class gold project that they're uh, working towards developing as well and then they've got their bonanza grade crd at their uh, ruby hill project uh, with very high grades of silver lead zinc and an overprint of high grade gold uh, and in close proximity to that Bonanza CRD, they also have a Carlin style gold mineral, uh, zone uh, or, or deposit uh, that is uh, called Ruby Deeps that I think they've got two world class projects right beside each other on one project where they're doing the underground workings and you either go one way and you hit the Bonanza CRD or you go the other way and you hit the uh, Ruby Deeps project. So, you know, this company I think is a cornerstone holding for investors that want exposure to uh, gold mining, gold and mining stocks. 
and uh, I think it's going to pay off handsomely in the uh, in the next couple years. I think that they're very undervalued short term, and I think that a catalyst that could move that valuation much higher is their they've been accepted to the Russell three thousand and another uh, index that. They are probably only about two weeks away from entering into. And when those indexes bring a new company in, they have to buy a lot of stock to uh, some suggest that over 30 million shares. Well, it, it, that looks like 30 million shares is about to come in in a very short period of time here. And uh, I think that that's significantly going to influence the price of the stock. Uh, the other cat, that's one huge catalyst. Other important catalyst is that they are regularly making impressive news from three different projects. And uh, I, I believe that that will continue. So stay tuned for more news from the projects and uh, look for that action based on the um, uh, based on the um, uh, the being in, included in the index, which will also bring uh, institutions that follow those indexes that also have to position themselves. This is a really great scenario. Puma, Explor Puma Exploration is a new sponsor over the last month or so that I'm very bullish on. They're in uh, New Brunswick in the Bathurst mining camp on the west side of that mining camp. And there they have found what is quite impressive to me, which is a, a series of parallel zones with excellent high grade and good continuity to those zones. And they're all sort of port pointing in the same direction. So I think there is a lot of uh, potential to find more of these zones as well as follow them deeper. And uh, uh, this company is starting off at a very low base. I think it's very undervalued. And um, they're about to start drilling on that uh, project uh, any time now. So they're going to be generating a lot of news. And I think it's going to be good news because they're expanding on what they already know. And what they know, I don't think is valued into the company appropriately. And uh, I think they've got a big project on their hands. And I'm very bullish on Puma Exploration. And uh, that's another one that's a sponsor. And uh, I think very highly of them. Suma Silver. Uh, is drilling right now on their project in Nevada. Uh, it, it's uh, near the town of Tonopah. There they've found high-grade to bonanza-grade epithermal veins, uh, and uh, they have geophysical targets that they're drilling to expand on those known high-grade veins. Plus, they've got a great project in New Mexico called Mogolon, which uh, has recently made some exceptional uh, high-grade results as well. Uh, so this company has two great epithermal vein projects with high grades where they've hit the bonanza zones or the boiling zones of those epithermal veins in two locations, two separate projects that they'll be drilling both, and they're going to generate a lot of news from those uh, those uh, two projects, uh, the one in uh, Tonopah and the uh, one in uh, New Mexico. So stay tuned for more news out of Suma Silver. I think they've got a bright future ahead of them. Um, before I close, I'm going to go into a few. The, all of those companies that I talked about are sponsors of my reports. So I follow them very closely. I know them very well. I watch every news release. I comb over all of their websites. Uh, and uh, I really do my homework on my sponsors. Um, but there's a few others that I follow very closely and do a lot of homework on that are picks, but are not sponsors. One of those is McEwen Mining. Um, they're going through a, a, a turnaround on their gold mining operations uh, where they're increasing the grades, they're lowering the costs, they're improving the margins, and they're doing a lot of exploration. Uh, so though that's a that's a recipe for a good turnaround on their gold operations. But what has driven their stock to about a triple in the last um, eight months or so is their project uh, called McEwen Copper. Now McEwen Mining owns fifty two percent of the of the McEwen Copper, 
Uh, and then Rob McCune himself owns about 14%. Stellantis, the big car maker, uh, owns about 14%. And uh, uh, Newton, which is a, um, a venture of RTZ, the big mining company, Rio Tinto, um, they own about 14%. So the only way for in investors to get involved in McEwen, McEwen Copper is through owning McEwen Mining. And uh, I think McEwen Mining is very undervalued, uh, not just because of their copper project, but with the turnaround that's happening on their gold mining operations. Uh, this is a company that I think has a, a great future. And I think it's the kind of investment that uh, for investors that want less risk, uh, but exposure to copper and gold, um, McEwen Mining offer is a great opportunity. So uh, do your homework on McEwen Mining. I've done interviews with Rob McEwen on my YouTube channel at Rocks and Stocks News. And you can also find those at uh, rocksandstocks.substack.com. Uh, he's also involved quite significantly with a company called Canadian Gold Corp. Um, this is kind of a, a company that's going through a transition and uh, where Rob McEwen is now a big investor uh, in that company. And um, uh, he's also brought Ian Ball along, uh, which they had a lot of success together with Gold Corp. And at their Tartan project, which was a former mine, um, that it's a high, it was a high grade mine that um, I still think has high grade in the underground workings, but they drilled, but there was some minimal drilling below that mining area and the resource area and uh, that hit spectacularly high grades over very thick intersections. And that doesn't happen by accident in these kind of systems. Uh, and I think that that's telling us that uh, they've got a lot of high grade gold uh, deeper in the system that they're now drilling for. So stay tuned for no news out of Canadian Gold Corp. And uh, the final company that I want to highlight is Silvercrest Metals. Uh, Silvercrest Metals is in uh, in Mexico. They've got the Las Chispas mine in Mexico. Uh, it just went through its first uh, full quarter of commercial production. And in that quarter, they were uh, producing silver at $11.45 an ounce and selling it for more than $20 an ounce. That makes for very high prop free cash flow. With that free cash flow, they were able to pay down. They've now paid down 95% of the debt that needed to, to build the mine. Uh, and while they were doing that, they also increased their cash position over the quarter. Um, the, these are these epithermal vein systems with high grade gold and silver are cash machines, and that's what they have. And uh, I think it's got a it's just starting out its life as a mine, uh, and I think it's got a lot of blue sky ahead of it. So Silvercrest Metals is the kind of investment that that I think is ideal for the investor that wants exposure to silver and gold, but they want less risk. Uh, when you've got a cash making machine of a mine that just started mining, uh, it's got a lot of upside ahead of it. And uh, because it's a free cash flow machine. Uh, and uh, so that's the kind of investment for uh, those that want a little less risk. All right, there you go, folks. Wanted to talk about strategies as well as some companies that I follow very closely that have a lot of catalysts ahead of them. And um, I, I think that we're in a uh, inflection point for the junior mining. I think those that wanted to sell on the lows have uh, uh, been able to sell their stocks on the lows. And, you know, the old saying is you want to buy low and then sell high. Well, first you got to buy low in order to sell high. Uh, and a lot of investors get it backwards, which is to sell low. Uh, but they're run, that's run its course. And I think now we're headed uh, higher in a lot of uh, the junior mining space and the developer space uh, in the uh, mining sector and new miners, which is what I all, those are the kind of companies that I follow. Um, to find out about my work, you can go to my stock, uh, my YouTube channel at Rocks and Stocks News. 
or my Substack at rocksandstocks.substack.com. And uh, do your homework, uh, speak with your financial advisors to assess your risk profile. Uh, and uh, a good place to start that is in uh, a lot of these, almost all of these companies I've done interviews with are talked about on my sector reports. And uh, that's sort of a good launching point for you to do your homework. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.